Welcome back. We're going to discuss cash and cash equivalents and accounting for cash. I think we all know what cash is. It's a, it's a bank account marked cash, but it also includes cash equivalents on the balance sheet. And you've probably seen that title, cash and cash equivalents, on the financial statements that you've downloaded from the SEC website. So cash equivalents are something short term and we call these highly liquid. So one month, two months, three months, um, things like um, government treasury bills, commercial paper, which are um, from companies, short term notes where they've borrowed money, um, money market funds, all of these are cash equivalents and commercial paper is when a company loans money to another company so it's essentially an accounts receivable but because it's so short term it's converted to cash quite quickly cash receipts let's think about this let's think about the cash register at a Walmart or a Albertsons or a QFC one person assigned to a register customer comes up they run the goods over the register, customer pays, and they give a receipt to the customer. The cash register person keeps a record in the register tape. They count the cash when they change personnel. I, I probably have been many times in a line where it's my turn at the cash register, and then the person says, sorry, I'm leaving, and you have to wait where a new person comes, and there's cash counted. Then you match the register tape to cash, checks, credit, and debit card payments. And then you store the extra cash in a safe with limited access. And you bond personnel requiring vacation. So you never want the same person at the same register 100% of the time. Now the way your homework will work out is you're going to have a scenario. This is what's happening and you have to match what's happening to the one of the eight internal control elements. So let's do that. One person assigned to a register, that's establishment of responsibility. If in your situation it says three people assigned to a register, that would be a violation of establishment of responsibility element. Provide a receipt to the customer, that is documentation. And the customer actually serves as an auditor. If they look at their receipt and it says $10 and they say, wait a minute, I gave you $15, that, that serves as a counter checker to make sure that the transaction was done correctly. Keep a register tape of all transactions. That big roll of tape is turned in at the end of the day where they track all the transactions for the day. Count the cash when you change personnel. That's when one person's leaving and one person's coming in, they both count the cash together and agree on the amount. Internal verification, independent internal verification. Then taking that register tape and matching it to the cash, checks, credit card, and debit card payments in the cash drawer. So if the cash register tape says you made sales of $2,000, there should be $2,000 worth of cash. It might only be $500 worth of cash, but then there might be $1,000 worth of checks and another $500 in credit and debit card payments. They should balance. Store extra cash in a safe with limited access. That's physical controls. Storing the cash in a safe place that locks bond personnel, bond the cash register personnel, require that they take vacations, that's a human resource control, and have separate people assigned to a reg at a register who counts the cash and stores it in the safe and who makes the deposit at the bank. So what that means is the person who's at the register cannot be the same person who stores the cash in the safe and makes the deposit at the bank. These need to be separate people. So that's segregation of duties. Cash receipts. Now most companies are not having customers who pay them at a cash register. Cash receipts are usually money that is mailed in by the customer and mail should be opened by two people. Checks should be endorsed and a list of total checks prepared. They should be given to the safe cashier. 
all receipts should be deposited at the bank, and then a copy of the bank statement should be sent to the company treasurer to compare with the deposit amount. So what does all this mean? The bank prepares a monthly bank statement that shows all the checks cashed and all the deposits made. And we're going to talk about that in our next video. And the treasurer should compare those deposits with what was listed up here as all the checks received for the day. Finally, let's talk about petty cash. Petty cash is a small cash box that's locked up, unless it's needed, of about $100 used to pay very, very small amounts. It's a way of giving your employees reimbursements, provided they have authorization and a receipt for small purchases such as calculator batteries or donuts, something like that, without having to do the larger amount of paperwork for, say, a travel to a trade show, which would involve air travel costs, hotel costs, and expenses along the way. This concludes our section on cash. Our next section will be on the bank reconciliation.